I'm here with Rudy Swanepoel. He is minister at the Andrew Murray Dutch Reformed Church in Johannesburg. And we're going to talk about uh, what is happening in the world currently in the light of the fact that it is happening during Lent. Uh, Rudy has uh, daily uh, reflections that he holds on YouTube at seven o'clock in the morning for his congregation and also other people like me who find myself in Germany at the moment. Um, and he has referred, you have referred Rudy to the fact that people are pointing to whether there is any significance on the one hand or on the other hand, whether it helps in some way to interpret what is or seeing what is happening, experiencing what is happening from the point of view that it's happening during this time. What have you heard? What have you thought? Yeah, Yolanda, um, the one thing that did take place is that somebody asked me what I think is happening in, to Christianity at this time. And I sort of, that really made me think quite a bit. And I said, well, I said to myself, well, this is happening in a particular time. As you said, it, it, it's happening in the time of Lent when Christians around the world, and this I find fascinating because I think at this time, there's a sort of a, a greater awareness of, of togetherness, of us all being in the same boat. But anyway, this, the person asked the question, what is happening in and to Christianity at the moment? Because on the one hand, there can perhaps be a sort of a very clear disillusionment. You know, people are praying and people are turning to God and people are asking for healing and asking for protection. But as we know, or perhaps, and I don't want this to sound harsh in any way, but perhaps we should have known this even before this current global crisis, that we cannot employ God or use God to be protected from almost from life. So then the question is, what is the alternative and what is the alternative in the light of Lent and in the light of yesterday's celebration, commemoration of Palm Sunday? Well, perhaps the alternative, perhaps the reality is exactly what we should have seen and known in Jesus from the beginning. And that is that he enters life, that he comes into this world, um, that he has this name, this sort of, and to me, this is the most significant, um, perhaps, name there is. And it is Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. So, so, so he, he's born, he lives, um, and then he lives to the fullest extent of what it means to live. Uh, he lives and then he dies. And we are a few days away from, from Good Friday. Um, yes, so, so to, just to get back to your, your initial remark, um, I don't think there's any sort of obvious or apparent significance, but, but I mean, we were given the ability by God through the Holy Spirit, we believe, to interpret and to make sense of our lives. So maybe this is a, dare I say, lovely time to interpret what is happening in the world in the light of Lent and in the presence of Emmanuel, uh, God with us. Um, yeah. <laughs> I definitely want us to talk more about um, uh, something you mentioned earlier while you and I spoke, um, uh, uh, that we got accustomed to a, a wrong normal or an unhealthy normal, and now we have to sort of uh, become unaccustomed to that and, and the change that is involved in that. But let's stay f just for a moment with that word, because I think it is... Um, it's so powerful, uh, Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, God with us, and that the, the Hebrew places the significance in the us, that there is something about the presence of God that we experience in communion with other people, that when, when we become 
open to the presence of another human being that in the I almost want to say the ordinariness of that experience something truly profound and um, beyond boundaries can shine through that experience that theology has always referred to as the communion of saints and in this time it's maybe a little bit of a challenge. It's it's not um, so easy necessarily to experience that because we have to experience it through these mediums, not in the way that we are mm-hmm. used. To. What do you think about that? That communal aspect of, mm-hmm. of even beyond just mm-hmm. just Christians, but as a human mm-hmm. family, that in our togetherness, mm-hmm. in our solidarity with each other, maybe with in our solidarity with those that are most vulnerable that it is exactly there if one can speak of an axis it's 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 at that point where we encounter the presence of christ mm-hmm. um yolanda uh, the word that comes to mind uh, is embodiment i'm um, i'm a very very big f- I'm, i want to talk about embodiment and and and, and the cross because you refer to the axis but but i mean what you are what you are highlighting when you refer to that is that that there's an intersection there's a there's a critical point there's a there's a point where a spark actually takes place and where That's something it. ignites yes um now maybe embodiment and 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 cross maybe they are then very closely linked um you know i'm sometimes amazed at how we sort of undervalue or how we fail to appreciate uh, the revelation, the embodied revelation of God in Christ. You know, we we theologize and we um, we create uh, doctrine and dogma and philosophy and whatever around the embodiment and around the good news, but we really, really fail to appreciate the embodiment of God in Christ. And in your remark. You are making it so clear that that embodiment is not a done thing. We talk about Christians, we talk about churches, communities of faith as the body of Christ. Do we know what we are saying? Do we understand what we are saying? Um, And then obviously with your reference to the most vulnerable, and that's a phrase that's become sort of, it, 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 it has been placed in the center during this time, during this crisis. Um, then, obviously, you make the boundaries of the body of Christ and the extent of the body of Christ and the presence of the body of Christ. You make that relative, which mm-hmm. should be done. It has to be done. Um, I, I, I want to confess something. At, at our church, we, we have a, a soup kitchen and I am not regularly involved at the soup kitchen, meaning I, I don't regularly pitch up and help with the serving of that meal. But due to the situation and the lockdown, um, I am now code responsible 50 50 in a completely equal partnership with one of the general workers here on the church site and about an hour and a half ago we we had the soup kitchen now and let me just clarify the soup has now been replaced with a almost like a it's like a meal supplement in the form of a little packet of fortified um maize meal so there's amino acids in there vitamins minerals etc so it's a really it's it's a very unsightly meal but it's it's a it's a good meal nevertheless yes and i stood there at nine o'clock this morning and i i mean it's it's just the the strangest awareness to 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 be with people who have nowhere to go they're supposed to be looked after by municipalities and the local government at this stage, and, and, and they are not. And I stood there thinking, what is this? What, what, what is happening here? And what could happen here? 
Um, so right across the spectrum of human experience and human togetherness, uh, there is room and there is need for the presence of God to be seen and to be felt and to be experienced. And I, I think, I mean, maybe this is the extrovert in me speaking, but, but, but I think that because of this time, we will look at bodies differently. I think we're going to be changed because uh, the other thing that deeply bothers me and disturbs me in your reference as well and in our earlier conversation about that normal that we became used to, the thing that really disturbs me is how we've become accustomed to treating people as, as I almost want to say, commodities. Let's say commodities. And I think the reason for that is that we, we are so, we've become such cunning and clever and, <sighs> and I think the other word is wily consumers. We are, we are consumers. That has become the determiner of our deepest identity. And the, distraction, con- from, and the distraction from our deepest identity. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so this is almost my prayer as well. I mean, I, oh, don't get me wrong. I don't pray f- from, from morning to evening, not by a long shot, but this is now in this conversation, it's, it's like a, the deepest possible longing that I have is that during Lent this year in 2020, the process will be one of returning to that deepest identity, to the true deepest identity, because we are we are bombarded with falsehood, we are bombarded with 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 images and ideas that we should aspire to, um, bodily ideas of what we should be and how we should look. That is not true. Those those things are not true. They are they distract us. They take us away from from our core, which is Christ. So at that intersection, just to get back to your cross, um, your axis, at, at that intersection, that it's, it's in that meeting where, where, where God is and, and where God is, is, to, be, is to be seen and, and felt and discovered. And we, sure, I think after this, we are going to um, have a complete... Uh, revaluing a, a new appreciation of what it means to be together um, as as followers of Christ and as bodies as, as bodies yes I um, when, when you sp- spoke of the body and you spoke of you know incarnation Jesus incarnating into the body and the importance of valuing um, and I think it's, it's an important balance to bring in you know we're speaking about Lent and um, then after the cross is the resurrection but we're balancing that with the incarnation which is often lost in in the um christianity that that you and i are both um in the tradition of and i i i think we lose so much it's an important balance to bring that in but while you were speaking of the incarnation i i just thought of that preposition in the greek that can mean both in in the body but then also through through the body it is not it is it is not you know we think that it is in um prayer or in meditation or in solitary time spent with the word of god and it is all those things but it is not only in those things that we experience the the presence of god the presence of god comes through the body through the experience of of being with other people of the human family and i think in this time it's important to even extend that to to say that it is the body of creation it it is all matter it is this physical earth of which we are part and we hear these wonderful stories of of waters clearing and fish returning and and skies clearing and himalayas apparently being visible visible again uh, fr- from further and further away and 
through the body of the earth, not just human bodies, but through this physical creation, the presence of God is experienced. And, and that's not, you know, that's not a revolutionary thing to say in itself that we experience the presence of God in our communion with each other. But to say that it is also in suffering together or in standing with those that are vulnerable, that is where the presence of God is both experienced but then also expressed. Bonnie uh, said that so beautifully. Where is the church? The church is there where the suffering of the world is being carried mm. and uh, being born. And um, that is different. If we think, if we think what we would normally be doing in this time, it's a time of organizing togetherness and going on holiday in South Africa. Um, this is the last, uh, the last um, urgent uh, grasping hold of summer before winter comes. <laughs> so everyone goes down to the ocean. Everyone is far away, and it's a time of joy and celebration. And we don't experience Lent. We don't experience the slowing down, the, the vulnerability of being human, the suffering that for many people, especially in, in, in uh, developing economies, is a daily reality. It is a daily, endless, day after day reality. And this year, we get to experience it, which is the it is um it that is no small thing that is no small thing yolanda i think the other thing um that is being um that is being sort of almost uh, stripped of its um untruth and and you've now used the word suffering repeatedly um and and in your in your remarks i I sort of clearly heard the the difference between, you know, sort of just remembering the suffering of Christ in a sort of abstract, in an abstract manner, and experiencing um, the suffering of Christ or a form of suffering. Now, there's a huge difference, and I think that much of sort of popular theology, and this is not criticism. I think this is. This is a this is a description of, of of a certain landscape. Much of our theologies are geared to a the avoidance of suffering, and mm -hmm. then b the sort of embrace of of dare I say prosperity. Yes. Um, and 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 that I think you know to get back to my very first remark, my, my friend asked me what is happening in and to Christianity at the moment, I, I think maybe we should use this time to return to that suffering with God who, Emmanuel, God with us, God through us. Um, and I'm going to interrupt myself quickly. While you were talking and you mentioned the, the, the health care workers or the sort of, let's say, the hospital scene at the moment in many places. Without romanticizing it, because then I, it would be problematic again, but without romanticizing it, that situation in, for example, in a hospital, can there be a more, can there be a clearer or a, a, a purer embodiment of the love of God than one person taking care of another person. Mm. I don't think there can be a clearer revelation of God ever. So, so if people, I mean, this is one of the most unanswerable questions or topics in the whole of theology is where is God in the presence of suffering. But in terms of this conversation, God is there where somebody's arm is being cared for 
after a drip has gone haywire, that thing we so fear. God is there where somebody is being cleaned. God is there where somebody is being in a calm voice told to, to not worry. Um, that is where God is. Um, and, and this is not because of uh, anything other than uh, the gift of God when he gave himself. Uh, the gift of God when he said, I am the present one. I am not absent. I'm not remote. I'm not sending statements or sending messages. I am, I am with you. Mm -hmm. um, but we are now almost being invited again to, to, to yet again believe that. Um, to believe that God is not absent but that God is present. And I think we're also invited to maybe, maybe again for the first time, believe in mystery and to be comfortable with mystery. We will not have the answers about what is happening now. We will not know exactly. And I think people are so desperate for answers that they believe all sorts of things, that, 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 that we go to conspiracy theories and to to all sorts of things, to try and make sense of this. We will not understand life. Yes. We will not. But on these small levels, on these sort of unseemly, unsightly levels, where it appears as if it doesn't um, hit the news or, yes. you know, it's not shared a million times. But on those levels, that's where God is. Yes. That is where it makes sense. Um, not in a drama, but, but in that almost beautiful simplicity of people loving and caring and serving and, and being there and being present. Um, yeah. So we are invited to make God present, one to the other, by being, being with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, you know, um, with this sort of disembodied presence at the moment, um, I mean, in, in, in our congregation, um, in our community of faith, I've, I've, I've really, more than ever, I'm, I'm just seeing how, how people are are standing in a circle or being in a circle and where, where we really need each other. The, 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 uh, this one doesn't need that one more. We need each other differently. We need each other in different ways. So that's also why the contact is so important. I mean, people are organizing virtual meetings and they're organizing virtual everything. And I think all of that is incredible. I think all of it is important. I think it's it's lovely to, and I, 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 I'm not in that world where I'm not, I, I don't work in the business world where there are certain kinds of business meetings being held and I'm not there, but I can just imagine that those meetings in this time are also started with, but, but how are you? And are you okay? And how are you really? You know, not just to start something with the matters that need to be tended to and, and the, the decisions that need to be made. I, I know that people are connecting in new ways in this time, in mm -hmm. different ways, on another level, literally on another level. Mm -hmm. We cannot, that, that normal of the past cannot, cannot be what we return to. We mm. cannot go on treating my business associate or my whoever as a commodity, as a tool that's, that is simply there to be used. Yes. There is definitely a heightened awareness of our shared humanity. Mm. I, I, yeah, definitely. What did you want to say? No, there's, a, there's, a, there's an incredible article. It's, I find it fascinating how how the same themes are being addressed from so different, so many different perspectives and corners of the world. There's a lovely article on the Financial Times website that Arundhati Roy 
um, oh. she wrote, and she, she refers to a portal. She says that what is happening is a portal um, to a new world. And I found that image beautiful. It's, it's literally like a, a, a sort of tiny space in which so many things can can change and happen and 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 be forged into something new and we are going to step through that portal so so i think on 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 so many different levels individual level and and communal level we need to think what are we stepping into i mean at the moment we are sort of experiencing the burden of the uncertainty I, I don't even want to go to the economic realities and all of that. They are, they are overwhelming realities, mm. but they are, they are not disempowering realities. In many ways, they are also empower, empowering realities where we can say, well, by the grace of God, we are not losing our ability to cooperate, for example. In fact, that is being highlighted. The fact that we can cooperate as human beings that is being highlighted the fact that we can adhere to the rules and the regulations of our governments etc mm. that is a positive thing mm. the fact that crisis brings opportunity is it's 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 a it's a wonderful thing um so I, I would, sorry i would like to um, emphasize the important aspect of choice human choice in that regard because what we see in front of us is neither dead end nor portal, but our choosing makes it so. How we choose to engage with what we are faced with now creates what, what the world will look like going forward. And, yes, and that is incredibly important that we are sort of in a um, space where <laughs> everyone is focused on the same thing. This has drawn our attention in and we're all faced with decision going forward. Uh, how will we treat other bodies and the collective body, the earth, going forward? Because I think if we continue to do what we did, then what, what we see in front of us now is a dead end. <laughs> Absolutely. But Absolutely. we are faced with an opportunity to choose something different. We have to bring this to a close, but I wonder if perhaps we might do this again. It was really wonderful to talk to you. So let's see. Um, if you send me the link to that article, then I will paste it um, below, copy and paste it below. And uh, then if, if there are, well, if there's anyone listening to this who uh, would like us to discuss certain issues, then they can also let us know in the comments. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. We might do this again. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Yolanda. Thanks. Okay.